say? I was listening to Dr. Tracy saying that Michael thought that um, Obama didn't like him. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think that Obama was in a really strange position. Uh, people wanted to find something about him. You know, well, if he yeah. said he didn't well, like, he, if he sees a button like uh, like a Michael it's like, who doesn't like Michael Jackson? If he did, said he did like Michael Jackson, it's like, well, what are you doing? You like child molesters. Uh, if they took him yeah. over to some well, he's in Africa he's where he was supposed to, I don't even know what the name is. They said they could still smell the flesh of the people in there before they went into slave ships or whatever. I don't know what it was, the door of no return or something. But they could not wait to get him over there to, you know, to, to hear something, something uh, negative. But I guarantee well, you, I believe with everything in my heart that um, uh, Obama liked uh, Michael Jackson because Michael Jackson was actually, you know, like kind of walking like Martin Luther King. He really was. He had uh, something about him that made people want to stand up and be better. And I'm sure he exactly. probably affected Okay. I, I no, can't I, believe. I, you know what? In, in private, I have in, in private, I have no idea, I have no doubt that 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 Obama probably loved Michael, but he well, couldn't you know, say politics, it in public. Po, po, no, no, no. Politics is all about um, uh, image, okay? Uh, so, right. Uh, so, so that would be potentially, and I'm sure he had advisors telling him this. If you do that, potentially, uh, you're siding with a potential child molester. Okay. Right, and exactly. So, and, that's and, and that's so, what happened so, there. But okay. you cannot so that everybody, you know, anybody that can be, you know, like, here's Obama. He's got Jay-Z and, and uh, Beyonce on on an iPad listening to it. You know, he's got, like, uh, if he's got Stevie Wonder and all those people, he's got Michael Jackson all over his iPad. And uh, there's no way uh, that you well, could, you know. You know, I know he had to love Michael Jackson, but yeah, there's well, the way here, the political, like thing. you, you can't, yeah, you couldn't part. never open up your mouth and say it. No, no, okay. And to me, that is a coward. All right. If you, that, you know what? Now that I can relate to. Okay, when somebody you, is you, trying to call in, I, here's here's Dr. Tracy again. Hi, Dr. Tracy. Catherine, before you start World War Three. It wasn't Obama. It was Bono. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. I thought you said Obama Bono. because thinking Obama, they had like uh, well, Obama, him up. Obama in those days was just a junior clerk in Chicago. He wasn't even running for political office, you know. Ah, uh, good for you. Thank you for straightening that out. That, that uh, no, no, new, I, I said that we were walking by a picture on my wall. And it was one that Bono had given us when we opened the clinic. And he turned around and he said, um, I don't think Bono likes me. Well, we're going to it in a, in a, on a different day. But, you know, it has nothing to do with Obama. Oh, I, I, thought, I thought she was talking about some other issue, not the picture on your wall. I, yeah, I, I, did, thought, I, I, I thought all wrong, I guess. About, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think Bono had any political issues where Michael was concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, yeah. Certainly not I, any I, political issues, but uh, Michael felt that Bono didn't like him. That well, did he ever break out with that? You know, because I'm sure Bono it wasn't true, right? I don't know. I never discussed it with Bono. Oh, okay. Okay. One Got never it. knows. Okay. All right. Well, there, there's clarification. Uh, sorry about that. So glad you called back and explained it because I, I thought you know like no, they just kept pressing yeah. him. They you know for whatever when Michael died, they were just all over Obama. Why did you you know they wanted him to? It, it wouldn't have mattered what he said. You know, uh, it would have been something to be on the first black president about, and that's a fact. That really is. So they had like all this little stuff going on, and also some other kind of thing that was in Africa. That's only two. Um, in terms of a black president, sorry, myself and Nelson Mandela and Michael talked one night together, 
I know Nelson's dying tonight now in Cape Town. During a period that I, I was treating the vitiligo on Michael's leg, either he phoned or um, Nelson Mandela phoned us, and um, we were setting up a concert in Africa, in Rwanda, where Grace came from, and um, he put on um, Nelson Mandela on the phone. I didn't know it was Nelson. And he, uh, the person turned around and says, oh, I, I believe you want to... Um, we're in a concert with Michael in Africa. Take this. And he says, no, no. And Michael's laughing, sitting up and saying, no, no. You take it, Tracy. He says, you take it. Okay. And I'm, I'm saying, hi, how are you? Uh, like you're a concert promoter or something? And he says, no, I believe um, you want to set up a concert in, in Africa. And I said, yeah. And Michael wants to do one in Rwanda because, you know, with HIV people. And he says, yeah, well, I will help you. Uh, I will help you every way I can. I said, well, thank you for that. I give the phone back. He says, it's Mandiba. It's Mandiba. You know, I says, okay, Mandiba. I have the phone in one hand. I recognize the accent. I said, are you in Cape Town? And he says, yes, I'm in Cape Town. I said, I used to live in Cape Town. Do you know Bantry Bay? And he says, I know Bantry Bay. And I said, do you know Simon's son? He says, I know Simon's son. And I said, you know, I used to live down there. And he says, hi. And then I give the phone back to Michael. And I said to myself, Oh my God, Mandela! Mandela, look at you know. So I said, "Give me the phone back," and he just laughs and says, "Oh no, no!" And he puts the phone in his pocket and starts talking. He says, "No, when grandfather calls, he says um, you must talk to him." He says, "Look at," he says, "he'll not even remember it." Um, he says, "He's got Alzheimer's. We'll deal with his son." Very there he... interesting. There, you know, Michael had he showed me this place. He wanted to send me on a vacation one time, and he showed me this place in South Africa. That was beautiful. It had giant bronze elephants on a walkway that went up to the main entrance to this 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 uh, hotel, and there were these beautiful blue pools of water around it. Uh, you know what that place is? Yeah, I think it was Mount Nelson, wasn't it? Five star hotel. Yes, it was a five star hotel. And Michael yeah, yeah. wanted to send me, Michael wanted to send me there, uh, but I remember right, that well. Yeah. It was in, oh, he, he loved that. I think it was Mount Nelson in in, in the Cape. Oh, okay. it was in. I knew it was in South Africa, and it was stunning. What a gorgeous place! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, uh, I think um, I, he I, stayed there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he used to go there. He said, "I love this place." You know, you'll you'll love it too. You know. Um, and you're right, but I, Barney would have loved it. it. It was beautiful, and South Africa is beautiful, and uh, everything about it. I lived down there during the '90s, and was in and out of it many, many times. And um, I first had my chance to go to South Africa, believe it or not, to work during the 80s, and I refused to go there with Christian Barnard in Cardiff Thoracic in, in the Goodest School until um, 1990, and on, I think it was January the 19th, 1990, I was in Baghdad, and um, Nessa Mandela got released, and I said, okay, I'll use my South African and dental council as was then um, registration and I got registered and I couldn't go there for another two years because I had to go to Scotland and then to Gibraltar and then I made my way down through South Africa but I took so long reaching there honestly because I went through Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Botswana, um, Zimbabwe, Zambia, God, I, I Took so long to that my job was gone, and so by the time I reached there, I did another cardiothoracic job off Long Street in a private hospital, but not in the British Cure where I was supposed to. But at the time I got down anyway, Christian Barnard had um, uh, developed arthritis, and he went down to um, the Greek islands to hang out. And it's just funny how life changes for everybody, you know. Well, yeah, you know, that, ex- that you know that explains your accent. I was looking for your Irish accent. Uh, and and I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's more South African than anything else, you know. Oh, my Irish accent is there. Believe me, no, it's 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 Northern Ireland, so it's sort of, but it's tempered with a bit of um, Australia um, yeah, and South Africa, and probably the United States as well. I, I lived for quite a period in um, Miami and Santa Barbara. I was with some Santa Barbara friends tonight, and um, Los Angeles. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm New York. Kinda, I'm right now, New York. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm right next to Santa Barbara. Okay. 